Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we are discussing the stuff of dreams. Grubel Forcey of Le Chaudifon, founded by Stephen Forcey and Robert Grubel, from 2004 with the debut of their first model, the Double Tourbillon 30 Degree, through 2006 when they first showed the model you see here, the Tourbillon 24 Second, and beyond, the company has consistently set its reputation, its stature, and yes, its legend beyond all but a few in the highest echelon of high horology, a watch that makes no compromise in engineering, finish, assembly, or materials. You can see and you can purchase this Grubel 4 seat Tourbillon 24 second in white gold on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this extraordinary Tourbillon, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Grubel 4 c Tourbillon 24 second. So in 2006, the basic model debuted and the principle was simple, to create a more animated, so visually more interesting, and more chronometrically precise wristwatch take on the Tourbillon complication originally envisioned for pocket watches. First, let's talk about how this watch fits because it may surprise. Now, it's one of the more wearable Grubel 4C references at 43.5 millimeters from nine to three, not inclusive of crown or the outcropping of the Tourbillon at at 7 o'clock on the dial. Now, the watch is 16.3 millimeters thick and this is the watch's largest aspect, but you will note there is a little bit of a rounded lip to the bezel and it will slide underneath a suit jacket cuff, though this is anything but the kind of watch you wish to bury underneath a tire. The most surprising, and in my opinion, heartening measurement of this watch is the lug-to-lug -lug dimension, which is a very reasonable 51.7 millimeters with very short and tightly downturned lugs. This is a watch designed to be worn on normal human anatomy. You can wear this watch, in my estimation, on a wrist as small as 15 centimeters in circumference, and that's not universal for all Grubel 4C timepieces. Of course, my 16 centimeter circumference wrist wears it easily. When I show you the profile, you'll see just why this watch wears so well on a small wrist. Those lugs are short, stubby and calculated. Grubel 4 among the watch brands that recognizes you can make a bigger watch but not a bigger client. Now the strap is unconstrained. You can pull it straight down, though tightly coupled to the case flank to create a highly integrated aesthetic. There's very little daylight visible between strap and case. It doesn't want to flare and fight the curve of your wrist. The strap, however, is beautifully made. Deluxe, no expense spared. You can see the sheer cut sides emphasize just how thick the material is with a medium rectangular scale alligator leather in black, semi-gloss with a monotone stitch, supple calfskin on the underside, and a Grubel 4C double deployant clasp in white gold to match the case. Of course, a Grubel 4C sparing no expense, you would never expect to see a pin buckle on a watch such as this. Nevertheless, given the cost of the watch and the difficulty in manufacturing it, it's reassuring to know that you'll have some protection against dropping while donning or removing at bedside. Now, the case is a sophisticated piece. This is a giant with both both brains and brawn. So you've seen the scale, you've seen the brawn, the visual punch. The brains come in the subtleties of the finish and the contouring. So I may as well polish a little bit so you can see the reflection of light in the case flank to a greater degree. The case flank starts with a vertical satin finish and you can see it's somewhat set inboard from the bezel and the case back, the case back and the bezel overlapping slightly cantilevering outward to add another depth effect to the case flank. So you have the outboard bowed form of the curved case flank vertically satin finished. You have the bezel and the case back hovering outboard. And then you have lugs that are quite distinct from anything I've experienced. They're convex and almost like a rounded inward bent mirror. You could see how they're pinched inward and beautifully curved to catch the light and truly explode, bending the imagery and the light of the surrounding ambient scenes to create a unique vision. This is why I say the watch has brains as well as brawn, because though large, there is God in the details, as Mies van der Rohe once said, or to paraphrase Mies van der Rohe, the watch is thoughtfully designed even in microcosm. Now moving inboard from those sinuous and sculpted lugs to the case itself, you can see Grupo Forcey not afraid to take liberties with design and to innovate. They're also not afraid to polarize a bit, and the outcropping of their tourbillon cages often 
creates exactly that, a polarized audience. You either love or hate with very few in between. No one is no one is left with middling opinions about this watch. You either dig the aesthetic and the notion of complete visibility, or it's simply too avant-garde for you. Personally, I adore it, as these tuber-like protrusions from the case flank make it easier to enjoy that 24-second tourbillon, as well as the entire structure that underpins it, and from all angles. You can see that from a visibility standpoint, this design is a stunning success. Now the dial is contoured, complex, and fundamentally a large mass of gold. So the dial base itself is gold. It has an anthracite coating atop, the indices, Arabic numeral 12, the Grubel 4C logo, the hands for the power reserve as well as at center and for small seconds are all crafted in 18 karat white gold to avoid oxidation or tarnish. Now the anthracite coating is an opaline or a, a satin type finish without a grain. So it's a muted metallic. It doesn't have a grain like a sunburst. Instead it has a metallic quality with a very light pebbly texture if you look at it underneath a loop. Now you can see that there are several focal planes, starting with the hands, moving down to a minutes track outboard. You can see the applied scale for the 72 hour power reserve. There's a stepped track for the hours with the applied white gold polished indices, diamond polished to be sure. You'll note that there is a set of semicircles that are actually concentric for the second scale because the tourbillon is 24 seconds. It can't take on the usual duty of a tourbillon on a wristwatch which is to double as a constant seconds indicator. It simply moves too fast. So you have a second scale in which unequal length ends of a counterweighted seconds hand trace two concentric tracks, one for the first half of the minute and the, then the inner one for the second half of the minute. It's quite easy to read and intuitive in person. Now the movement has a depth of 9.35 millimeters, the better to give it a sculptural beauty and a depth, almost a forest-like fixation that allows you to glance through the movement rather than at it, just as you glance through a mass of trees and branches and leaves rather than at a single focal plane. The eye starts at the bridge, beautifully continuously rounded and black polished, and continues down to the base, and there is a darkened PVD base to provide a better contrast against the polished elements of the tourbillon, as well as a 24 second scale to allow you to trace the circuits of the tourbillon itself. Now we're going to go to the case back for a moment, we're actually going to zoom in a little bit because it's no longer on my wrist. We're going to go to the case back and then come back to the dial. The case back shows you the GF01's primary plates and bridges. GF01 is the movement, 36 joules. The tourbillon cage itself has 88 parts, but the majority are large components in the movement that are fashioned of nickel copper zinc. It's known as German silver in Longa watches. It is properly called Maishore in the French speaking watch regions and Grubel Forcey is based with its 100 employees out of La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland. The finishing is both immaculate and original as the frosted bridge texture, which is a wonderful pebbly grain, is quite distinct from Geneva waves and has long given Grubel Forcey bridges a distinctive aesthetic instantly recognizable. You note that there's a partridge treatment for the countersinks of the jewels as well as golden chaton pocket watch style holding the pivot jewels themselves. Now the bridges have beautiful mirrored anglage on their periphery and you can see Grubel Forcey does not shy away from the tight cleft of interior angles where two lines of anglage meet. You can see many of them. The hallmark of a well finished movement is that this is both attempted and successfully pulled off, successfully attained. Plenty of interior angles and you'll note that the anglage is so broad and mirrored that you can easily see it without resort to a loop. You can appreciate it with the naked eye, but a loop will pay dividends if you acquire one. Now because the bridges are so thick, they also have sheer sides, which are satin finished with a linear grain. So if you were to look at the sheer side of the bridge, get really close, and, and look at the wall of the bridge that's vertical, that too is finished. You'll also note the engraved and lacquered Grubel 4C crest as well as the individual numbering. Grubel 4C in its early years making about 30 to 50 watches. At the peak of production in the current era, a great year will be 80 to about 100 watches, so exclusivity is assured. What you can't see, but you must if you buy the watch, examine, is the level of finish on the wheels with the individual teeth mirror polished and the spokes chamfered and beveled just as the bridge are. Now you'll also note beautiful and oversized kiln fired heat oxidized blued screws are present and correct. Twin mainspring barrels in series endowing the watch with a 72 hour power reserve. 
What's really impressive is that the 72 hour power reserve is achieved in spite of the manic rate of that 24 second tourbillon. This is quite a feat of mechanical engineering and it's one of the reasons why the watch is functionally large, not arbitrarily large. It needs those huge twin mainspring barrels. What the watch also features, and this is a godsend to those of us who wonder why every manual wind watch isn't built like this, there is a slipping spring in one of the barrels to avoid accidental overwinding and damage to the watch. Many will do that, making the transition from the more familiar automatic winding watches that cannot be manually overwound. Most manual watches can, not this Grubel 4C. You'll note the tourbillon is absolutely transfixing. Hypnotic and manic, rapid in its circuit and animated in almost every respect. It's also an assembly of impressive materials. The balance is a massive 10 millimeters in diameter. The pillars on both sides of the balance that give the cage its vertical element. The pillars are made from aerospace grade aluminum and the cage itself is constructed from titanium. It features an overcoil hairspring. It, the watch beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. The overcoil along with the 25 degree incline of the tourbillon and the rapid spinning action of the tourbillon carriage, all three of those features help to even out the effects of gravity on the chronometric precision of the watch. Historically, Grubel 4C watches have been adjusted to aim for no more deviation than minus three plus 3.5 seconds per day, but they have won third party scored chronometry competitions in which they have performed far beyond those tolerances. So this watch is a champ in every sense, objectively evaluated to meet the claims, the lofty claims first proposed by the inventors. Now, of course, this is an exquisite watch. Gold dial, gold case, sapphire case inserts, 24 second tourbillon, beautiful depth of field, and a movement over 36 millimeters in diameter that is by itself bigger than a Rolex Datejust. This sensational Grubel 4C timepiece can be seen and it can be purchased on our website. And if you have an inkling that you might want this watch, I am more than willing to fly out with it to introduce you in person to the features of your new timepiece. And just so you can get a start on accessorizing the lug spacing, because I know you want to go OEM and aftermarket both at the same time, start assembling a quiver of accessory straps that are 22 millimeters. See it and own it on the watch box.